All right, guys, so today we're going to start our centers. So let's go over all the centers that we're doing. So group one, uh, Jenna, can you tell me what we've been working on this week? Um, we've been working on... Um, into, no. In our centers. In our centers, we've been working on integers. No, what were we doing with the out of our books this week? Oh, we were working on um, adding two-digit numbers to each other. That's right, we were working on adding two-digit numbers. So we're going to continue on with the lessons that we've been doing. Um, so that's group one. You know to come over to me and be ready to work with a pencil. Group two, you are at computers today. Uh, Ian, what are you going to get on for computers today? Success maker. Okay, and then success maker, they pop up that daily progress report. What are you going to do then? Get a reflex. Now, success maker we know sometimes doesn't always work when we try to log in. So if it doesn't work, what are you going to do? We're going to get straight off and go to our second tab and get on Reflex. That's right. You go on and, and go open up another tab and go to Reflex, right? Because if it doesn't work, we're not going to get all upset about it. We're just going to move on, right? All right. Group three is doing division with models. Everybody remember we talked about when we looked at that CGA and I pulled up those standards, the one that we struggled with the most was division with models as a whole group. So group three, your center today is working on division with models. Macy, what are some strategies you can use to help you when you're solving individual models? Some strategies you can use for using the models are either division, multiplication, subtraction, or division. Okay, but what can, if we're working with models, what can we use? If you're working with models, you might have to use... Not sure. O'Hara, what do you think? Well, we did. Well, I worked with division models. I think I have. Um, so I think I have to go back to the page to see if we have worked on division models. Okay, well, so you can use some of your old work to help you out. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a good idea. All right, group four. You guys are working on real world integers. Now I know we had just done that right before CGAs, and but we did struggle with that standard a little bit. So we're just gonna give ourselves a little more practice, right? So, Elizabeth, what do you think? If we are stuck on an integer, can't figure out what it would be, if it's a negative or a positive, what can we use to help us? Well, we can use our interactive journals. We uh, actually did make a foldable where we put a number line. And we can also use our chart back there where under negative and positive we have notes. And under both we have real life examples. Okay, so if you get kind of stuck, you have somewhere, you have some couple of resources to look at, okay? In group five, you guys are working with remainders. And what do we talk about? When we're doing these remainders, we've got to make a decision about them. Rachel, what do you think? Um, what do we got to do? When, when we're looking at remainders, what are we struggling with with those? Um, I don't know. You're not sure? Remember we talked about, remember our bus problem? We did that bus problem. If I had buses and we were, we were talking about going to Legoland in fifth grade, if I have buses, and I have three extra students and not enough buses, you're going to volunteer to walk? No. No. So what do I need to do? Get another bus. Get another bus. So we've got to think about the context of our problem, right? So you guys can work out your division, but you also need to think about and have that discussion about the context of your problem. Okay? <coughs> all right, so those are our five centers today. And now everybody's going to get a chance to get to play all the games, but that's what you're playing today. Okay, so chance. Let's talk about chance. Let's do a quick review. We're at a voice level two. Who is not at a voice level two during <laughs> centers? Who's not at a voice level two, Nari? The computers. the computers. You're wearing your headphones and you're working independently, but everybody else is at a voice level two during this time. And what kind of talk am I looking for? Maddie? Voice level two. I know, but what do I want to hear you talking about? Accountable talk. Accountable math talk. We've got to make sure we're on topic. Um, remember we talked about if you need help, you ask your group. If you're not sure and you guys are stuck, write it down. And after centers, you can come to me and we'll discuss it, okay? Uh, our activity, of course, is centers. Movement is as needed. You know where to go to get what you need. And we're working with our center groups today. All right, do I have any questions before we move to our centers? Okay, make sure you have a pencil. Make sure you have any tools that you're going to need. And let's go ahead and get set up. So yesterday, what were we working on? Who remembers what our, our strategies are that we worked on in here yesterday? We were working on blocks. 
Okay, so we had some base 10 bots. What was another one, Maddie? Um, we were working on ways we could find out how to add two-digit numbers. So we worked on a few different ways, right? Do you remember one of the ways, Jenna? Um, well, I can go back to the page, and one of the ways is we can picture it, and it uses base 10 blocks. Okay. What about you, Jimmy? Um, the, another way is that when you can have, like, a problem and you can break it up mm -hmm. to get a correct answer. And that's the strategy you really liked when we talked about that yesterday, right? That's one yes, you were really comfortable with. Go to the next 10. Yeah, we could go to the next 10. That was our other one. Okay, so let's turn back to page 56. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the problem as a group, the problem in the green box, okay? There are 48 students on bus A and 43 students on bus B. How many students are on both buses? Okay, so we're adding two-digit numbers again. Look at the picture it. Now, we don't always have base 10 blocks, do we? So we can, an easy way for us to show it is that we can draw a picture. But do I have to draw every square of that base 10 block? No. No. I have lines and dots. Works just as well, doesn't it? I have tens and I have singles. I have ones place. So it works the same way. Okay, so let's see. If I were to give you a whiteboard, I want you to demonstrate 48 using pictures instead of base 10 blocks. Forty-eight. So how many groups of ten would you draw, Maddie? Okay, so draw your four groups of ten. Now can we just draw a line to represent ten? Because we don't want to spend all our time drawing. I mean, I know you have beautiful art, but we want to make sure we're focusing on not spending all our time drawing pictures. Okay, so now, how many ones? Now, what did you draw first for me? Okay, well, we'll we want to start with what? When we're doing this, what, what do we usually start with? Which place value? Tens. The tens. So let's go ahead and erase the ones. So stay with us, okay? Don't try to jump ahead of me. Okay, so I don't want you to get me confused. So now do your ones. How many ones are there in 48? Eight. Oh wait, how many tens do you have, honey? You need that too? Okay. Well here, why don't I get each of you one so you can erase if you need to. There we go. Wasn't that much quicker? How, how many tens are we doing? How many groups of 10 in 48? Four. Four, so. Then we're gonna go into our ones. How many ones are there in 48? Eight. Eight, so you can just do a dot for each one. So this is a way, if we don't have base 10 blocks, we can still use that strategy, can't we? Okay? So how is that strategy, how does the strategy on, pay, on this page like the making 10 strategy? Look at the model it. Look at the model it right there. What is this right here? What does that line represent on the model it? What would we call that? A number line. A number line. But I don't have numbers on there, do I? No. So how, look at what they've done here and tell me, what, how do you think that connects to that making, um, making a 10 strategy? Because you're going to the next 10. Oh, did they? Okay, so they went from 48 to 50. They did go to the next 10. But this is... You're not just doing it in your head. You have something visual to help you, don't you? Yes. Because sometimes we can get confused when we try to do everything in our head. Okay? So let's look at the, let's look at the model it section closely. It's a count up by making a 10 first. So what are some other counting up strategies that you could use? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So we could count counting 10s. If we started at 48, if we were to add 10 to that, what would that take us to? Uh, 50. No, if you added 10 to that, that would be 58. 58. So we could do that all the way up too, couldn't we? Instead of doing our little jump here, we could do it all, we could do 10s all the way up until we get close to our answer. 
So we could start with tens or we could start going to the next 10. All right. So do you think it's easier to mentally to add the tens and then the ones? Or do you think it's easier to count up? And we're talking about if we were to do it just in our head, just mentally. Is it easier to add the tens and then the ones? Or is it easier to count up, go to the next 10 and then add on? You think it's easier to mentally count up? Maddie, why do you think it's easier to mentally um, count up? Because to add the tens and then the ones, because um, to add 48 and 58, you might have to carry a number, oh. and that's a little hard for someone to do in their head. So trying to regroup if we have more than 10 ones might be a little much to do in your head. So counting up might make it a little bit easier because we all like those multiples of 10. They're landmark numbers, aren't they? Yes. So if we can get to a multiple of 10, it's much easier for us to add on to that. Okay. All right, so let's look at page 57 together. Everybody have a pencil? I was going to give you mine. Okay, so look at the connected. And think about the problem on page 56. With the bus A students, the problem in the green box, that's what we're working with. With the bus A and bus B students. Okay. So it says, why do you add 2 to 48? Why would you add 2 to 48? You add 2 to 48 because you're rounding it up to the nearest number. Well, we're not really rounding. Because remember, we're adding, and that 2 is part of what we're adding. So why would we go, why would we add 2? Why wouldn't I add 7? Because um, what we're doing is we're splitting up the, four, we're splitting up the 43. Mm -hmm. But why wouldn't they add seven out of that? Why would they add two? Because, um... What number did it get them to? It got them to 50. So why would they want to add two and get to 50? Why do you think that's a good strategy? What did we just talk about? What's easy to add when we're doing it mentally? Um, the ones. But when, we, when they went from 48 to 50, why do you think they went to 50? Why would they choose 50? Because it's the nearest 10 to get to their number. It's the nearest 10. And we said 10s are really nice and, and they're much easier to add mentally than having something else in the ones place, right? So if they get to that 10, then they can move on to adding the rest up. Okay? All right, so let's look at, let's look at some base tones. Okay, so I want you to set up a model of problem nine using the base ten box. And here I've got some ones for you. Both of you. All four of you. Jimmy, share those. Here, a model of 48. Of a page. Well, the whole problem. Okay. Of problem nine. The whole problem we're doing. What are we adding to 48? Um, two. What are we adding to 48? 43. 43. So let's set up 43. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Okay, so now you have your two numbers that you're adding, right? 48. Okay, so let's look at our first add-in. 48. I were to line these up like they were a tens place. How many would I need to add in to make it a ten? How many? Two. Two. So I could take two from here, couldn't I? And move them over? Now, if I'm using this strategy, what would you do? 
and then I would add one more base tin block because you wouldn't. So I would just add it right here, and then take away the ones because you don't need them anymore. What is that called? Um, regrouping. I'm regrouping that. I'm taking these ones, moving them away, and putting that tin in its place. Now, all I have to do is what, Maddie? You have to add the. Um, Tens together. Now I have it real easy, right? I just need to see how many tens I have and how many ones. So, Jayra, how many do I have there? You can count them. Nine. Not oh, well. You, so, we'll, but look at this all together. What is 91. my sum? Ninety-one. Very good. So let's look right there at number eight. This is just writing down what we did. We had 48 and 43. What did I do with the 43? What did I take away from the 43? Two. How many ones? Two. Two. I took two. So I took away two. You can put minus two. Now, did I just take this two and put it back in my pile over here? Jimmy, what did I do with this two when I took it away? You took the two away so I can go to the... Um, well, to regroup. Okay, but where did I do it? I took it from 43, so I subtracted it from 43. Where did I put it? To the other tens. To that to 48, didn't I? I added it to 48. So I didn't just take it away. The 2 doesn't just disappear. It's got to go somewhere, doesn't it? So I subtracted it from 43, and if you look at that, and I added it to 48. So I ha added 2 there. And it shows you the two numbers I had when I did that. This became 50, this became 41, which is very easily easy to add mentally. So what was our sum? And you can write it in that box right there. So if we go back and look at it, did I take that pencil? I'm so sorry, Maddie. So what was our sum? Okay. So why, well, we've already talked about this, so let's just write in our answer. Look at number nine. Why did we first jump two spaces? If you look at that number line down there, why did they jump these two spaces? Jenna, do you remember why? To get to the nearest ten. To get to that nearest ten. If they jumped two spaces, then that took them to 50, which was that closest ten. Very good. We get a seven, and we lose another turn. <laughs> Oh, Harris turn. Let's see if we don't lose this time. We have eight and we lose a turn. Wow. There you go, Christian. Four. Um, four. Okay. Um, oh, you got it. I thought you were going to lose your turn. 147. You guys got it. 147. Uh-oh. Who's turn is it? Um, nine. Nine. Yes. 324. Divide by four. Um, Let's see if we win. Oh, no. We didn't win yet. Not yet. Not quite. Oh, you go. We got a three. No. Um, yep. There is no jury. Oh. Hope I win this. I hope I get this one this time. It is 11 and we lose a turn. Another 11. Ten. And we lose a turn. You might go back and forth. And and be two degrees above zero because the keyword there is above. So, maybe. Um, your turn. Um, six. So we negative uh, we seven. We already did that. Okay. Seven minutes. But you could still do it because um, it has another one.
with seven yeah. units to the left of zero on the number line. So to the left is where you start going to negative because zero is where it separates it, so it's not a negative or a positive. So it would be going to the left, so, and it's seven units, so it would be negative seven. Okay. We won. We did? Right there. Mm. Yeah. Did one. Okay. okay, so now what, which one do we want to play because it says on the card we, we can play whatever game we want to choose that we choose. Um, um, I think this one. Yolanda has 17 apples. Seven apples? Okay, great. How many apples are left over? Well, 7 times 2 is 14. And, and 7 minus 4 is 3. So it's 3 would be left over. Um, double. Okay. Um, v. Frank has 17 apples. Eight apples fit in a crate. How many apples are left over? So, eight plus eight is 16. So then there'd be one left over. Because plus one would go to 17, and then that, and then that would equal eight. That would equal um, 18. So, I mean 17. So there'd be one left over. Okay. So we're on X, right? W. W. Oh. Um. Matt has 20 football cards. Seven cards fit on a page. How many cards are left over? Um, well, seven times three is 21. So 14. So then 20 minus 14 is six. So there'd be six left over. Yeah, because, because 21 would be going over 20, so we can't do that. So there would be, yeah, there would be six cards left over. Todd has 29 baseball cards. Five cards fit on a page. Seven times three is 25. How many cards are left over? Well, five times five is 25. And then you'll have the remainder will be four because 25 plus four is 29. Yeah, and it can't go over because otherwise it would reach 30, which is too much. So, yeah, there would be a couple of left over. So what did you start with? I started with 30. Mm, but look at our look at our problem. What are we adding? What are the two numbers? 39 and 28. Oh, so what should your open number line start with? Um, it should start with 39, but oh, so I, I started with this because um, you could take one from 28 to make it 27. But then what would that make this? It wouldn't make it 30. What would it make it? It would make it 40. Oh, so you see what you did there? So now you're adding too much. So, but why don't you demonstrate that? Why don't you put 39 there and then you can add the one and make it 40. Demonstrate that for me. So change that to a 39. Because you're on the right track. You have the right, you don't have to erase everything. So let's start at the 39 because that's where, that's our first add-in, right? So we want to start it where our problem starts. If we go ahead, if we start further back, then we can get ourselves confused. So. You can do a one. A one. Where would that put it? 40. Okay, and then what? And then a 20. Which would make it 60. So how many do you have so far up here? Um, 21. So, and what are we supposed to be adding to it? 28. 28, so how many more do you need to go? Seven. There you go, so do your final jump there. So what is our sum? 
Um, the sum is 67. Yeah, because like how do you know by looking at that number line? If I were to walk up and just look at your number line, how would I know that's my sum? You can know that it's a sum okay, because so the 7 and the 1 make an 8, and if you combine those together, you get 28, and those are the numbers that you have to add together. But let's go back and look at number 11, what we said about where is the sum on an open number line. The last jump on the open number line. So is that your last jump? Mm -hmm. So if I didn't even know the problem, I could look at your number line and know that your sum is what? Um, the sum is 67. 67, because that's your last jump on that open number line. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so what did you guys use? Did you like this, the open number line? Mm -hmm. So maybe it's something you could use. And once you start practicing it, it might be something that you can do without having to write it all down. But it might be a strategy you can choose from. Have you ever used a strategy before? No. No, so you see, you've learned something new. Now, Jimmy, did you like that strategy? What's your favorite strategy so far? Um, you still? Yeah. Okay, so, so just because we're learning all these strategies, what do we say about strategies? What's the, the important thing? Regrouping. No, we don't need to always regroup. They can help you um, solve they can an help equation you solve, that's hard. Absolutely, but do you have to use every strategy that we no. talk about? No. no. What's the most important thing, Maddie? The most important thing is... Um, you don't have to use every strategy. You can check your work. You can use multiple ones to tra check your work. Like mm -hmm. we talked about, you used one and then used another one to check your work. But when we're talking about strategies, remember we say it's like one, it's like a tool belt. You don't always have to use every single tool, do you? But what do you want to try to find? Um, the answer. Well, you want to try to find the answer, but we're talking about strategies. You are trying to find the, be um, the strategy that best suits you. The, be the strategy that best suits you. Jimmy's strategy, he likes it, but that might not be your favorite strategy, Jenna. Right? So you have a, we have a whole lot of strategies to choose from, and then you get to find out what best suits you. So now that you've worked them out on the whiteboard, I want you to go back to number 12, and I want you to talk about the strategy that you used and show me your work, how you solved it. Yes, ma'am. Um, what they did for number eight. Oh. So it's like that open number line. It's like that open number line, but it wasn't the whole line, was it? No. So what did you see? Jenna, I think Is that what this is? I think you have my pencil. Oh. See pencils. So let me see. So this how is this like that open number line? Um, because you're, you're jumping ahead, you're adding on 11 to get to 50. Oh, you didn't just add one. No. You didn't want to go to the next 10, you went a 10 ahead? Okay, very good. So you added 11, but the 11 didn't come out of thin air, did it? Where did that yeah. 11 come from? Um, I had to see what, um, what 39, so, um, 39 minus 50 is 11, and I knew that if 39 mm -hmm. minus 50 is 11, that 39 plus 11 is 50. But where did this 11 come from? Did you just kind of decide, I'm just going to add 11 onto my problem? Where did you get it from? Um, I Where'd added... Where did you have to take it from? You had to take it from the 30. Mm, I didn't take away 30 or 11 from 30. Where did I take this 11 away from? Remember my base 10 blocks? Let's set it up as a base 10 block. Look. So we have make that 39 for me and I'll do the 28. How about that? Okay, so instead of deciding to move one, you wanted to move 11, right? You didn't want to go to 40, you wanted to go to 50. Where would I get that 11 from if I'm looking here? I did I take it from these over here? Where did I get that 11 from that I added here? Look at this picture right here to help you. Where would I get that from? Remember, we did it with the 2 over here with j -Rose. We made that 8 a 10 by moving 2. Oh, so I took the 11, I do 11, away from, what was this number before? 28. 28. I have to take that 11 from the 28, right? So then this became what number? What number did it become? 50. 50. And then this became? Eighteen. 
17. 17, which is exactly what you did here, but we just did it with base 10 blocks, right? So if you're not sure, make sure that you have some way of modeling. You can use pictures, you can use base 10 blocks if you need to check it. But this 11 didn't come out of nowhere, it actually came from this 28. Because these are the numbers we're working with. We, we don't pull numbers from here when we're doing it. We're working with these, right? So we have to work with what we have. Okay? So go ahead and write down your strategy. Very good. You should always check your work, right? And I just found out that it was 67 instead of 58. See, that's why we check our work, isn't it? Okay. All right, so tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to do some more practice with these problems. We've gone all over all these strategies, so when we meet again, actually, no, not tomorrow, Monday, when we meet, we're going to go over these strategies and we'll do some practice problems with the partner, okay? All right, so make sure you've written your answer down, and then you can go ahead and start cleaning up, and we're going to start wrapping up centers, okay? And we'll get everybody else done, and you guys get cleaned up for me. All right, I need everybody to start cleaning up their centers, please. Make sure you put all of your pieces in the bag and everything back in your boxes with the lid on nice and neat. Uh, my guys on the computer, even if you're just starting reflex, let's go ahead and get logged off and start cleaning up so we can get ready to switch classes. Can somebody put on, make sure you put my base 10 blocks back up and put the lid on them for me, please. Thank you. And you can stack your books like we always do. And make sure you log off this computer so we don't get locked later.